Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Stigma Free Society Wellness Chats with Nisha. My name is Nisha Kare. I'm the co founder of Human Biography and Women of Wonder. I'm a director, producer, uh, I'm uh, a co-founder of um, these companies that I really care about. Why? Because we capture the stories of fascinating people doing positive things. And through this Facebook Live event, I'm representing Stigma Free Society. And Stigma Free is a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce the stigma of all kinds. So they have a focus on mental health and they promote mental wellness education for youth, while providing resources for educators and school counselors, parents and guardians. And really the society's goal is to create an awareness of the various stigmas that exist in the world and help develop an understanding of the challenges that numerous people face. And we want to encourage people to foster acceptance of themselves and of others. So to learn more, please join us at the Stigma Free Society, um, www.stigmafreesociety.com. And I would love to now welcome and introduce our um, guest today. Uh, it's Amel, uh, Nicole Amel. Um, Nicole Burke Amel. But Nicole, am I pronouncing your name correctly here? Am so I yes, so the, our business is Amel's Catering. Amel's Catering, yes, great name. Um, thanks for being here. So I'm gonna tell you guys a bit about Nicole. Uh, with Amel's Catering, they're celebrating their 20th anniversary, and she's been at the head of this for over, um, you know, these these so many years. And she has, you know, had catering and weddings and thousands of corporate events, over 800 weddings, you know, private events ranging from like two people to 200 people. And really, she's an award-winning trailblazer, and but yet still staying humble and approachable, which is you know a great combo and really likes to mix that with like humor and reality. So um, most often you're gonna get uh, the biggest sales pitch is that she's bragging about her awesome team and that it's a diverse team as well. You know, um, Heartfelt Pride was celebrated in 2020 uh, in huge fashion by being recognized by the Small Business BC Award for Best Employer and at the BC Autism Awards for Inclusive Employer. So. Welcome, Nicole. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for that awesome intro, Misha. Thank you. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. So, Nicole, tell us a bit about ML Catering and mm -hmm. your connection to Autism BC. Absolutely. So, uh, as you said, ML's Catering Friday is our 22nd anniversary, and I've been here 20 of those 22 years. Wow. Um, and, you know, we are a catering business, so we're in the hospitality industry. Um, and, I, and I say that because being hospitable is actually the core or the foundation of our business, which sort of brings us to that inclusive piece uh, and the diverse piece of our business. So uh, our focus is being hospitable, which is warm and kind and loving and all of those things, uh, making people feel at home when they're here. Uh, and then we focus then people first. Uh, so our team. And when our team is happy, they can service our guests. And when our guests are happy, that helps us service the community. And in doing that, we're looking after the planet as well by minimizing our footprint. So that is the foundation of our business. Uh, and that sort of stemmed this hiring culture. Um, it wasn't really intended okay. uh, other than pick the right, choose the right people for the right positions. Uh, and make sure that that fits with the culture of our team. And what that meant is that we have folks on the spectrum with diverse abilities. It means we have folks that are part of the LGBTQ community. It means we have folks with different races and religions. Uh, and that's what makes us a really interesting family. Um, and as a caterer, it means we produce really interesting food <laughs> because we all come from very different places. And I think that's what makes us cool. Oh, that's amazing. I love that outlook of, you know, caring for humanity, caring for the planet, just like caring and really like making that effort in how you even hire. And I think yeah. that's a really important point that you're making because who we create in our place of work, that's the community that we're creating. And so 
you know, community, what, whoever you invite in, that becomes part of like your, like your family, your community, like the people that you care about. And so I love that you put some thought into it and making it diverse. And, um, and like, what do you see are some of the benefits of having that? You know, if we're speaking specifically about uh, Autism BC and those with diverse abilities, um, foundationally, catering is about consistency. When you're looking at a food service business, uh, it needs to be consistent and it needs to um, be of the same, you know, of the same quality all the time, which means you have to have really amazing standard operating procedures because a pinch of this and a pinch of that that you do in your own home cooking doesn't get translated very well. So for somebody that has a diverse ability that's on the spectrum, having that consistency and those very rigid SOPs is a huge benefit. They're more efficient. Uh, but what it does is it means we have to create these documents for everybody to enjoy. So we all become more efficient and we all become more profitable. So if we're looking at it strictly from a business perspective, that has helped us tenfold. Wow. Uh, we've also taken a look at our, at our environment, right? We all hate fluorescent lighting. Who does it as I'm sitting, as I'm sitting here on the screen and looking at my coloring, right? But kitchens are typically overhead fluorescent lighting. Well, when we won the 2020 um, Inclusive Award last year, we got a bit of a prize. And with that prize money, we changed all of the lighting in our kitchen to wow. these LED, um, still overhead, but they're LED. So it's easier for those who have sensitivities to that flickering of the light that you get with fluorescence. But it's also better for the planet. So it fits in all of our core values. And it means that we're creating a more inclusive environment for everybody, not just the one person that might go, um, that might be uncomfortable with that light sensitivity. In reality, we all are. We all <laughs> right? are. That's we such an are. amazing point. You know, it's not that, oh, we're just catering to one person, as I say catering, but it's not that. It's that actually what's better for everyone. Exactly. And keeping that in mind because like if we spend eight hours a day in a location where it's like flickering lights and overhead fluorescent then you don't realize the impact it has upon us but it does have an impact right and for some people they'll notice it more but other people might not even notice it it's there. so it might mean that you become a little aggravated or upset or annoyed or tired and, and so what a great idea to take that prize money and maybe you can actually tell us a bit about um, winning Autism BC Inclusive Employer Award for 2020. It's a really big deal. So congratulations, first Thank of all. Thank you. And like, uh, tell us a bit about that. What did it take? What was involved? Um, what were it was, it, yeah, it was a really big deal. Um, yeah. And I and I want to provide a little bit of context because as a caterer, 2020 was not our friend, uh, mm. as it is to many businesses, but particularly in the tourism and hospitality, it was a tough year. Uh, and we kicked off 2020 winning a Best Employer Award at, at Small Business BC, which was a, a huge deal. And only a couple of months later, an Inclusive Employer Award. Wow. And when you're managing layoffs and, and things yeah. as we were with, with the pandemic, um, it actually provided that sense of motivation. That, that credibility and that accountability partner that says we need to figure out how to get this done so that all of the team can come back and we can continue to thrive. Um, so I think that was the biggest thing. It gave us as, as ownership that, again, to take that ownership and figure out what to do next so that the team could still be proud of where they worked because we still were here. The lights were still on, the doors were still open. Um, and having that and being able to say that as a hospitality employer, that you care about your team and your people is a really big deal. Fundamentally, yes, we're all excited about winning awards, of course, um, but being able to say that we are recognized as a catering company, not for our food, but for our people, um, just warms my heart, right? And the team feels that. Um, I tell a story uh, often, our dishwasher, Ben, um, he has been with us for 22 years. Our dishwasher has been with wow. us for 22 years. Amazing. And we call him the heart of the kitchen. 
And so his station is in the middle of our kitchen. Um, he is an amputee, so he has a prosthetic limb. And he is the first person that everybody meets when they're a new hire in our business. So when they take the tour of the building, we get Ben's gauge to see what, what he thinks of all of the new people in the building. And that speaks to, for us, um, often the stigma is around, you know, the, the hierarchy of who's in management positions and that kind of thing. And we want to turn that up on its head, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody ha has an equal contribution to the new people that are going to be part of the family so that they feel that they get a say. And I think that's also really important to our culture because it creates inclusivity, right? You want to see somebody that looks like you, that sounds like you, that has the same interest as you. You know, you want to create that camaraderie. And so when we're giving somebody um, an opportunity, they're excited then. Everybody's invested in that new person. And that makes them feel warm and welcome, as opposed to, ooh, I wonder if they're going to notice if, right? And so we're all really open and, and honest here about uh, where we fall in all sorts of different things. I mean, as a humanity and as a society, as I say, Ben has, has a prosthetic limb. We have uh, LGBTQ folks in the community. We have Jewish folks and Muslim folks. And, you know, we, we, and we share that around with everybody so that whomever's coming in feels like they have an ally, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, I, and I think that's really important. Wow, that's amazing. And so how did this start? Like, this is such a beautiful story and I would love for every, every employer to think like this and behave like this and be inclusive like this, but how did inclusion become so important to a malcatering? Well, uh, I, I mean, early on, we are a woman-led business. I mean, I think that goes without saying. Um, Very which nice. Is awesome. And so awesome. many of our key team are also women in business, which is nice. which is important. Uh, and I think with that, um, again, it was always a focus on taking a shot on on somebody, right? So you can. I come from a. a a mentality that you can train skill, you can't train attitude. And yeah. so when somebody comes in and they're positive and they're excited and they really want to be here, yeah. then I can show them the tools that they need to be able to do the work. Yes. And that positivity is what overflows in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and that's how it started is trying to find the people with the right attitude that were excited to want to be here and be with us. Um, speaking about, again, one of our folks on the spectrum, uh, Danny, who's been with us now, I think, nine years. Um, he came in almost every day. He had a portfolio of things. You know, he talks vividly about mastering his fried rice. And Ooh. he desperately wanted to get a position and he was having a hard time finding a job mm. and what's particularly interesting about him and he shares his story actually you can look at it um our 20 year anniversary video on our website you can see danny and he shares his story um that what he really wanted as a person on the spectrum is to be able to contribute to his community and his society and be independent and be somebody that could pay his own bills without needing to have support. And so it was important for him to feel like he was a good, proud member of his community and society. And every day he would come in and show his portfolio and we didn't really have the work for him yet to keep trying Danny and he did. And now he's been with us eight years. So it's, it's a part-time gig because that's what um, works for him, uh, but Every week he still calls, I'm coming in on Saturday and I'm excited to do my dishes and what prep do you have? And oh, guess what? This week I mastered this. Can I try it out? Oh, wow. And so the team embraces that because they're waiting to see what fried rice or whatever it was that he's learned to do in his week, what he's going to bring to show us. And that makes the rest of us say, oh, well, we're going to show you our fried rice, aren't we? <laughs> but it makes it so that everybody so that he feels now that he's part of the team 
Yeah. And when someone says, yeah, your fried rice is actually better than mine. <laughs> it makes it so that, again, he isn't, we're all on the same playing field. Then. Yes. Yeah. And I love that point that you make that people want to contribute to society. They want to be part of something. And it also like varies how that might work for someone like full time yeah. for everyone is not necessarily going to be the way to go. Right. But I love that you're giving opportunities for like, you know, part time as well or different ways, because I think that we should be accommodating in that way, depending on different people, like what works, because everyone can bring something amazing to the workplace. So um, do you have like a personal connection to the diversely abled community? that has led you to be so passionate about the hiring that you do? Uh, I have one of my very best girlfriends uh, yeah. has a son that was or is uh, on the spectrum. And he's a teenager now, but when he was first born, I saw the challenges that she had in getting him even diagnosed, having anybody be able to see him and have her think that it was anything other than her being a bad mother which was a terrible experience for her so stressful. Um, and for him, right? Um, so not having the same access to childcare and, um, you know, play dates and all sorts of things that you have when you're a child growing up. I saw how alienated he was with his friend circle. And so for me, it was always that I don't want to ever have anybody feel like they aren't included, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's about seeing what, again, what are they able to do? Not mm -hmm. that they're disabled, it's what are you able to do? And let's see how we can fit that into what we're doing. And, and so that is where it started for me uh, in terms of being passionate about folks on the autism spectrum in particular. Um, but in general, uh, I think my outlook is always that everybody has something to contribute. Everybody has a warm, kind heart in there somewhere and wants to be able to give something. Uh, and you know, if I can afford somebody that opportunity to do that, why not? What impact do you see this having on your staff or even specifically your diversely abled staff? What kind of impact do you see it having or on their life? Well, I hope, I mean, fundamentally, depending on, on, their, on what their goals are. I mean, for somebody like Danny, it's being able to trust that he has a job, that everybody cares about him and that he can pay his rent and that he can go on vacation and all of the things that he wants to do. Yeah. for his goals. Um, for the others, I think it's about that bigger picture, that hospitality to the planet yeah. isn't necessarily just about using compostable dishes. You know, it's about being kind and, and whether that's reaching a helping hand out to somebody that's, you know, down on their luck on the east side, whether that's somebody that's disabled, whatever that is, it's a, it's a kindness that I'm hoping that we go out into the world with because you're happy and positive in your position and your job. We spend more time at work than we spend anywhere else. And so if you're leaving your job excited and positive still, yes, tired from, from working all day, but if you're, if you're walking out the door still wanting to say hello to that passerby, then that changes something. There's an essence in that, but that really changes something. And that helps our communities. It helps everybody. And that's what I hope people leave with, is, is understanding that we all are, are all equal and that we all do deserve a warm smile and a, and a hug when we can do that again. <laughs> Amazing. I, I love that you say that. I um, was used to be a career counselor, and I fully believed that, that if we spend so much time within the workplace, let's make that time happy. Let's make that time positive. And like, we want to bring our best selves. So what does it take to make that happen? And you really are doing that. It's phenomenal. And I think it's important as business owners and, and managers to have that understanding of, of time. Yeah. Because it's one thing to pay somebody a wage. Yeah. You're never going to be able to get that time back. Yeah. 
um, I've un had some, you know, health challenges in, in my life. And it really put that onus on the value of my time. We don't know when, when our last days are. And so it's that piece around saying, thank you for investing your precious time here. Yes. And having people know that we really value their time. And, yeah. and hopefully that changes the culture. Love it. And so what have you personally learned about the diversity able community from working so closely with your staff? Um, well, I, I have learned that we need to give more credit to those that have diverse abilities. I think there is, and when we're here as, as a stigma society, right? Yeah. I think there are some stigmas attached that, that it's going to be a hindrance somehow and that the productivity is going to be less, particularly in a business environment. And the reality is, is that's just not true. It, it's just not true. Um, we are more efficient and more profitable as a business because we're able to deliver things to more people because we have a broader understanding of what the entire community requires, not just one type of person, but everybody. And because everybody is empowered to contribute, it means that that spills out then to all of the other things that we're doing. So we, when our when our team feel empowered, then the guest is going to get a better experience from us as a business. And when the guests are getting better experiences from us as a business, we get more guests, which means we can give more to the community. And then it just it it builds from there. And that's again, that's the thing that I've learned the most. I've we've all got things to learn. Um, you know, as these movements happen and as these talks happen, it's about admitting where you, I think, where you are now and how you can improve. Yes. And, and I think going back to your original question around what did it mean to us for Autism BC, it's the recognition that we do, are doing some things right. You know, so it's yes, it's a win. Let's celebrate those wins. But it's also that thank you for putting the spotlight on so that I can continue to do better. Um, yeah, that's amazing. And by the way, if people are hearing noises in the background, it's that she's, uh, Nicole is at Amel's catering right now. So there's some, you know, a hustle bustle in the background. So Nicole, like, what do you do as an employer to ensure that all of your inclusion that your company does is meaningful? So, like what kinds of things are you doing? Uh, the very first thing, and I think everything that everybody can do, which doesn't cost a cent, is to say thank you. Yeah. Every day, all the time, before anybody leaves the building, we say thank you. Amazing. So I think gratitude uh, goes a really long way. Outside of that, we celebrate our wins together. Mm. So it's not just a, hey, this is a trophy that I won. This is an award that we won that we can be proud of and that we can share. And then it's also about, again, that empowerment piece. So right down to the, okay, we're getting new uniforms. You're a person that is uncomfortable with fabrics and it, you know, there's some things that, that don't quite fit for you. Why don't you go get the uniform? Because it's pretty likely that if you're comfortable in it, the rest of us will be, right? Ooh, so idea. it's about allowing those, um, what it's it's putting it on the other side right it's not making decisions that you know square peg round hole kind of thing yeah. right it, it's it's about allowing the people that are in those positions in those moments being able to be flexible and say look you can make the decision you know what you need to wear here's the parameters we need to look professional at least to have our logo on it go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right Fantastic. And, and that makes actually probably more detailed than I would be. <laughs> yes, because somebody's caring so much about that, they're going to put the effort in. Exactly. Like you were saying, it'll probably work for everyone and that you have the parameters, but it doesn't, like, things don't have to be a certain way all the time because we just think they do. Exactly. And then the people working with you will appreciate that rather than if you don't do it that way and they have to wear something uncomfortable, then to resent it. Is that like that? Yeah, yeah it just changes the it changes the culture. I love right? that example. Do you have any other examples of like 
different ways you support specific needs that your staff might have? Yeah, so the again, changing up the lights was something that was a really big deal, a really big deal for us. Um, you know, it, it was a, it's an investment uh, and it was a really good one. I'm seeing those changes already. Uh, we reconfigured, again, COVID allowed us some extra time. So we completely gutted our warehouse and restarted it again with a different system. So clear bins so that people could see what was inside them, uh, photos instead of words necessarily to be able to for quick recognition of things. We widened aisleways, uh, again, for those that might be claustrophobic in a warehouse environment. Um, restructured things so that, you know, all of this type of square plate was all together. So things like that to create better systems of flow um, so that there isn't all of the noise. Um, we also changed uh, and dampened some of the kitchen um, motors and things because again those the Amazing. noises are can be irritating for some so we yeah. dampened those um adjusted you know fans and things um the team has hours of time where we can dim now the lights and turn off the music when again for for when um that's uncomfortable for somebody so again it's it's about being aware of the environment and making it more efficient for everybody and that's really what it's done right it's made it more efficient for everybody if i don't have to spend five minutes looking in a box that isn't labeled it saves me time too <laughs> yeah right we'll see a great idea for everyone just to yeah. like start functioning in this way and that it's actually something to embrace and appreciate that it makes your company more efficient it does yeah and i think i mean the reality I and mean, we have to speak truths here is that when you're in business sometimes those are the things that hold you back. It, it's around how much is it gonna cost? Is it gonna be profitable? I mean, we're in business to be, to be in business. And I think those on the call who are understand that too, right? So it, it's about seeing that it actually has helped us. It's created more efficiencies and subsequently more profits. And if that's what your bottom line is, then you know you can have both. <laughs> You can have you both. It's such a great message. It's such a great yeah. message. And I think what you're saying, you know, it's probably companies and, and businesses need to hear this because they're probably thinking it's one or the other. But you actually can have both. And it's the time you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have your cake and eat it too. And it's a great example of it. So, Nicole, could you maybe share some suggestions that you might have for companies that really are interested in implementing? consciously inclusive hiring but just really aren't sure how to go about doing so finding the finding the people in the first place you mean yeah like how do you let's say a company's like i really want to be inclusive i want to have diversity and um within my community right. is it like starting with like a mindset probably and then even finding the people and like how, yeah like, i mean for us um, obviously, our connection to Autism BC is is something that we sought out, uh, and I think um, you know, depending on the, the business, that's maybe a good start. Right? Is actually go to some of the programming that they're putting on, reach out and find out what resources are available, um, because there are lots, right? Um, and just takes one, just takes one, right? Yeah. And then see how you can how you can build on that. Um, there are specific uh, folks that do hiring for those on the spectrum. Um, so you know, uh, Orbital Learning was one of the folks who um, who actually donated the prize money for our category because that's their focus is is integrating um, folks into the into the workplace. So that's what they do. So you can reach out. And do some and do some hiring. Um, again, once I and I'm sure it was them who said, and it and it's a I'm probably going to butcher this quote, but um, when you meet a person on the spectrum, you've only met a person on the spectrum. You haven't met everybody. Everybody's very different, and so you have to find the right fit for your business, and that not might not be the first person that you that you interview. 
but when is it ever? <laughs> no, no, no. I right? Yeah, yeah. So, so true. So that would be that would be my piece: is start with the mindset that everybody is able-bodied, yeah. and take off the blinders. Yeah. And just give it a shot. I mean, like anything in business, we're all creative. We all try something. It's it's not a, it's not as if if it doesn't work, you can't can't change it. Um, just try. Yeah. Just try. <laughs> just try. Yeah. And the results can be magnificent. Yeah. Magnificent. Yeah. And really, you know, I really just want to say thank you for the work that you're doing. And that it's, and thank you for sharing it with us because I think it's very inspirational to people. And it just gives ideas on how we can operate with community in mind, how to create community where we care about each other. But also, we can still benefit and profit and be successful in business, but also successful in like humanity and successful in the environment and just really helping the planet as a whole. So, thank you, Nicole. Really Absolutely. Thank you. Here. And um, just kudos to Amel's Catering for the amazing work that they're doing and that you're doing. So, just appreciate you and uh, appreciate the staff that you have, um, you know, formed and created a community with. So thank you so much. For being thank here. you. Thank you. Great. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you Bye, uh, in two weeks. Stigma free. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.